It's the annual celebration of speed in Quebec. And this year, the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières celebrates 50 years of racing with the big show. Get set. The true door, strong and fast, is ready to hit the street. The annual event that takes over the streets of Trois-Rivières is deep with NASCAR roots. Some of the most exciting finishes in Canadian racing history have been in this great city by the St. Lawrence. Andrew Ranger historically dominates at GP3R, but lately the NASCAR 50's points leader has been challenged at the circuit he once owned. This, the oldest street race in North America, is one title that every racer wants to put on their mantle. Welcome to the True North Strong and Fast on TSN. We're in Trois-Rivières, Quebec for the saint Tour Hotel Le Concorde. The NASCAR Pinty Series is the big show for the event's 50th anniversary. I'm Dave Bradley along with Adam Ross and Todd Lewis's trackside. Adam, it's a beautiful sunny day, but rain has followed this series at every turn. Dave, it's been hard on everybody. Yesterday, qualifying was washed out. In practice, only a few drivers took advantage in the pouring rain. They're going to line up this field by points this afternoon. And Andrew Ranger leads Lacroix by 18 with LP Dumoulin from Trois-Rivières in third. Basically, this is our starting grid for today. The Dumoulins alone have four entries this weekend. LP, JF, Raphael Lassard in the 07, and JF LaBerge in the 91. Earlier, Todd fought the massive crowds here to do his traditional GP3R grid walk. As usual, it is an enormous crowd here on the grid for the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières and the autograph session. And so let's do our usual talk to the front row. And it's Andrew Ranger in a familiar position up on the front row here at the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières, busy signing autographs. He is a four-time winner here. He is a three-time winner this season in the NASCAR Pinty Series. Can you get another win, keep the streak going, <laughs> and, and have another successful run here at GP3R? Yeah, yeah, it would be awesome. You know, I think we have the car to finish on the pole, and uh, we proved that on the road course, on the oval, we have a fast car. So uh, we, are at, we are at home, so I hope everything goes well, and maybe uh, put that 27 on the, on the, on the pole. Good luck, and uh, go back to signing all the autographs for the hometown fans. Thank you very much. All right, that's Andrew Ranger, who will lead the field off on the pole position. Alongside on the front row is the man who is second in the championship chase, and that is Kevin Lacroix. He was a winner on the road course at CTMP to start the season. He, too, busy signing autographs. Kevin, we're going to sneak in here for a quick word. You've had success here at GP3R and also had a couple of struggles recently, hoping for another good day today. Yeah, well... Uh... <laughs> I won uh, one race out of two, and last year went uh, really bad, so uh, the stats say that I'm going to win, but <laughs> maybe not. The uh, competition is really hard in the series uh, right now, and uh, starting uh, second, is, uh, that's good, and uh, I think the car is going to be fast, so really uh, looking forward to the end of the race. Good luck today. Thank you. All right, that's Kevin Lacroix, who will start alongside on the front row. As you can see through this gigantic crowd, it is packed here at GP3R. And the 18 of Alex Tagliani will start in the fourth position. He has won back-to-back -back years here at the Grand Prix GP3R, and he is looking for his third consecutive win. Also back with the NASCAR Pinty Series this weekend, Rafael Lassard in his first event in the NASCAR Pinty Series, a winner at the Autodrome Chaudière. And the 39 of Alex Gannett also rejoins after a five-year hiatus, his first road course in five years, and he was fast this morning in warm-up. Dave White putting the finishing touches on getting Andrew Ranger strapped in. He'll get the window net buckled up on that Mopar number 27 as we get ready to go racing. Drivers, start your engine! Pilot, démarrez vos moteurs! And that's one way to blast this off in style. A cannon salute to the drivers here for the 50th anniversary of the GP3R. You see Alex Tagliani's crewman Fritz taking a final check around the car as Tagliani gets settled. A great look from our 360 camera. Donald Tiege, we're going to ride on board with the driver from Boischatel, Quebec, on board the number 24 this afternoon. There's one of the hometown heroes, L.P. Dumoulin, the WeatherTech Dodge. He gets his gloves on as the field starts to roll. Let's take a look at your E3 spark plug starting lineup. Again, ranked on points, so that puts Andrew Ranger on pole. Row number two has Dumoulin and Tagliani. 
back to the third row we go, and it's Alex LeBay in the 36, DJ Kennington, a former winner of this event, in the 17. Row four has Donald Teach in the 24, and Jason Hathaway in the Kubota 3. Back to row number five, that's where we find Mark Dilley in the 64, the 22, driven by Mark Antoine Cameron. Row six is J.F. Dumoulin in the 04, Larry Jackson in the 21. Row number seven. On the inside, it'll be Anthony Simone in the number one. T.J. Renamato in the 02 Ford on the outside. Row eight, there's Raphael Lassard in the 07. And Simone Dion Vienne in the 37. Row number nine has the 91 of J.F. LaBerge. And David Michaud drives the number 56. Looking back to row 10, that's where we find Raymond Gay in the 20. Jocelyn Fecto in the 77. And rounding out the field in the 39, Alex Gannett in row number 11. So Dave, lined up by points, definitely rewards the drivers who have followed the series throughout the season as we see all the regulars up at the front of the field riding on board with Alex Tagliani. E3 spark plugs race analysis, 50 laps is the distance, but right at the bottom, that mandatory fuel stop is the big story. Yeah, beautiful day for racing too. It's nice and warm, clear skies as well. So that's a good news story for today's race. The field lined up behind the Dodge pace car, but look, the Mini at the front. Richard Dumoulin driving the Coconut Bar Mini, which he won here with 50 years ago. It really is an amazing story. Let's take a look at this track nestled here among the streets of Trois-Rivières, Quebec. Turn number one, a great passing point, heavy braking, but you've got to be set up for turn two, a sharp left-hander before you get to the gate Duplessis. Let's go down, check in one more time with Todd. Todd, only a 50-lap race today, but strategy will play a role. NASCAR has mandated teams stop for fuel between laps 15 and 30. Stop early, stop late, choose the right strategy. Could be the difference to make you a winner. As you see the field now getting eager to go, this will be an interesting front row. It's two of the most dominant drivers in the last several years here in the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières, starting side by side in Kevin Lacroix and Andrew Ranger. You see the drivers trying to build the heat in those general tires. So they will bunch up side by side, door to door. Remember, a bonus point is on the line for leading a lap. Both of these drivers know it. Kevin Lacroix needs every advantage he can get. Working on to Gilles Villeneuve Avenue, looking for the green flag. And we're underway here in 20 year. What a great look out the side of Alex Tagliani's number 18. This is that turn two I was talking about. You've got to get in position because it gets so narrow down here. In through the Duplessis gates, you see the field two, three wide in some places as they hang it out on the exit of turn three. Wow, those cars are loose to start this race. Kevin Lacroix hanging the back end out. Ranger sweeps to the outside, down to the inside. Slams the nose of the Mopar Dodge down as Ranger pokes through to the lead. Who is going to lead the first lap and pick up that bonus point? Ranger edged his way going into the turn, but Kevin Lacroix with a beautiful crossover on quarter exit. Even with that fierce battle, they still are gaining distance on Tagliani in third. Back and forth, a pair of dodges ahead of the Chevy of Alex Tagliani, who sits in third as the rest of the field comes through. What a battle in this opening lap. Kevin Lacroix leading Andrew Ranger by a matter of inches as they approach the start-finish line. Kevin Lacroix going to lead lap number one. Give the driver the bumper-to-bumper -bumper dodge, that extra bonus point for leading lap number one, but it doesn't look like Ranger's too happy to sit in second. He is driving the wheels off that thing, and did you see the right front tire on that car lift off the ground into turn one? Amazing what these cameras will give to us. Well, you can see the nose of the 27 also dropping down hard under braking so it appears as though it's got a pretty soft setup underneath the Mopar number 27. Right as they get to those Castrol signs you see the noses of these cars down up top we see Mark Antoine Cameron trying to get to the inside of Alex LeBay in a battle for six. That's a great passing opportunity turn number six and it looks like Cameron couldn't quite make it work we got a car around it's the silver line tools number one of Anthony Simone. And he couldn't make that sharp turn to get 
the right direction, so he drives straight. He'll have to spin that car around. I don't believe that'll bring out a yellow, as he will be able to get that car pointed in the right direction. Now we stayed under green as we ride on board the number 36 Silver Wax Hotel La Concorde Ford Fusion of Alex LeBay. Mark Antoine Cameron did make that pass of Alex LeBay. So LeBay back to seventh right now. And Kevin Lacroix leading by a couple of car lengths over Ranger. How about DJ Kennington in that Castrol Edge Dodge? He's one of the best race car drivers this series has ever seen, but it still feels like a bit of a surprise to me when he chooses to keep pace with drivers like Tagliani, Ranger, and Lacroix, who are infamous for setting an unmaintainable pace. Well, I was going to say, so early in these road course races, to see the 17 that far up the field is a good sign for the driver, the Castro Edge Dodge, as you saw the Spectra Premium 04 of J.F. Dumoulin battling for eighth spot with Jason Hathaway in the Kubota Chevy. J.F. Dumoulin, one driver, and we're riding on board with him right now, a little disappointed that we did not get to qualify yesterday. He's had such great success driving through the fields on road courses, but some of that is a product of him not qualifying as well as he really should. Yeah, he's a very, very talented road racer in the field, so keep an eye on that 0-4 to come up through from his deep in the pack starting spot. As you see, Kevin Lacroix continues to lead Andrew Ranger, Alex Tagliani as the field slides their way through. They are very aggressive with just four laps in the books. Well, and remember, this is a fairly green racetrack. We had pouring rain yesterday, not a lot of rubber laid down, so it will be relatively slick for these drivers. So the field spreads out single file around the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back on TSN. The 50th running of the Grand Prix of Trois-Rivières on TSN is brought to you by Pinty's, making great food fun. By Mopar, we built it, we know it. And by Leland Industries, a proud Canadian fastener company. Riding on board with Andrew Ranger, a familiar sight in this series, and that's watching the bumper-to-bumper -bumper number 74 get farther and farther away from the field, but they're approaching slower traffic, Dave. And that will throw a wrench into things. It's an opportunity. If you catch them in the wrong spot, it's an opportunity for those gaps to close down as Kevin Lacroix catches the back end of the 77 of Jocelyn Fecto, now down the back straightaway. Fecto sponsored by Roxor. And that is a cool, uh, they're an off-road vehicle, but they're made for the road now, and they've been everywhere this weekend. I, I mean, you know what? Do yourself a favor, Google it, because they are <laughs> really, really cool. And supporters of Canadian Motorsport, we love companies who back Canadian racing in the NASCAR Pinty Series. It's funny, I am talking to Tony Spiteri from Pinty's. It wouldn't surprise me if he takes one of these home. He is that enamored with those rock stars. He is a car guy, he loves all kinds of cars. Has a couple hot rods, I believe, of his own. Little bit of smoke out the back of that camera. Did you see that? Just a wisp of it. Yeah, it's something to keep an eye on. But look at the 22, High A Chevrolet of Mark Antoine Cameron, who's continuing a march up to the front, looks to the inside of the 17 of DJ Kennington. He's got a nose in there, but Kennington will have the preferred spot for turn number two. Down into two they go. That was the conversation we had. Positioning in two is critical on who can get down into three the best. Kennington gives Cameron the opportunity down into the corner. Gentlemanly move by DJ Kennington early in the race. LeBay back there as well didn't fill that hole, so a lot of these drivers using their heads early on. You can see how wiggly that car gets under braking. I didn't hear a lot of shifting there with LeBay. When we went on board with Dumoulin earlier on, you could hear some aggressive downshifting. You can hear those general tires just on the edge of adhesion on the Silver Wax number 36 car around the 56 of David Michaud. And that's over the edge of adhesion. <laughs> that's exactly it, but he manages to right the ship fairly quickly, and that's good news because we stay green. Listen to these engines roll around the streets of Trois-Rivières. 
We are locked 12 of the scheduled 50 lap distance still in the early going of this one, Dave. And traditionally, we will get one or two yellow flags, but you never know. With a 21 car field, the less cars you have in the race, the more opportunity there is for longer green flag runs. It's true, you don't get a lot of those cautions, but we are hearing some teams will come in right when 15 laps are complete for their fuel stop. Remember, they need to just stab the fuel container. Timing is pretty important. But also, if this race goes into overtime, some teams will be cutting it close on fuel. We've done the calculations. In the mandatory pit stop, you must come to a stop in your pit stall, and you must engage the car with the fuel can. I don't expect any of these teams to take on any amount of fuel. All they're looking to do is meet the rule. Maybe some of them will throw in a gallon of, of safety fuel in case we go into overtime, Dave. But really, the key is get on and off pit road as cleanly as you can. Riding on board with Alex Tagliani, he'll be doing double duty at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. He'll also be fielding a truck in uh, for Kyle Busch Motorsport with backing from Cantor. That's a good news story. If you're going to drive in the truck series, you want to be behind the wheel of a KBM machine. That'll be exciting, no doubt. There you see the tight turn number three under the Duplessis gates. You see they use all of the real estate out to the Armco on one side, down to the apex. You don't often see people just standing about uh, three feet off the racing group. <laughs> the way they go past that gate, he's in absolutely no harm's way. There goes Alex LeBay in the Hotel Le Concorde, number 36 underneath the Castrol Edge Dodge of DJ Kennington, J.F. Dumoulin, right there in the Spectra 04. That's all a battle for six spot. And they have really put a distance on the remainder of this field, so they're kind of keeping pace with that lead pack, separating themselves from, say, eighth on back from the rest of the group. It's right on board, J.F. Dumoulin. One thing we hear about these cars, Dave, it is a lot of horsepower for the car that's underneath them. So that makes them a handful of drive, which is how we separate the, the good from the great in this series. See that? Raphael Lassard is starting to move up as well inside the top 10 behind the wheel of the 07. Remember, he won in his very first time out in the NASCAR Pinty Series. The only driver to ever do so is Andrew Ranger way up out of the groove as Alex Tagliani goes by, so does L.P. Dumoulin. That's two spots for the Mopar Dodge of Andrew Ranger. All the way back from second, you see your leader is still Kevin Lacroix in the bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper total number 74, the number one Silverline tools of Anthony Simone. Now a lap down, there is your second place runner in the Rona EpiPen Chevrolet Alex Tagliani. As you heard, Todd up the top of the show, looking to make it three wins in a row here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. It's a challenging feat. The only driver to do that in our series has been Andrew Ranger in this 27. As we ride on board, Ranger. You see, you try to tell people that motorsports is a it's a physical thing to do and then you look at Andrew Ranger sitting there and it looks like he's riding in an armchair that he's just out for a Sunday drive. And you know, I've never cared about that argument. Is it a sport? Is it not a sport? I don't care. You go out and try it. <laughs> and when you can't do as well as any of the 21 people in the field, tell me if it's a sport or not or tell me if you had a good time. You've got to be really good to be competitive at this. You really do. And you come back about 10 pounds later after sitting in a hot box of a race car on a day as beautiful as it is here in 20 here, Quebec. That's interesting. You see the 47 of L.P. Dumoulin. He didn't drift out as wide as the 18 or the 27, sticking it to the track, not using that runoff area. I noticed Kevin Lacroix doing that earlier. Ranger was behind him using all the racetrack. The only corner where I really saw Lacroix use all the track was coming through the Duplessis gate, right out to the wall. Otherwise, he takes a very efficient line. Adam, it's important to note we are in that pit stop window. We've completed over 15 laps, so we will be watching the entrance to pit road. 
I would expect Kevin Lacroix to want to come in as early as he can, get back on the racetrack. I'm often wrong, but I've got to think Don Thompson Jr. will have his driver coming down pit road. Then it's going to be a matter of stopping clean, maintaining pit road speed, and getting back up to speed as quickly as you can. So there you see Dumoulin able to keep pace with the 18 of Alex Tagliani. The 27 has dropped back just a little bit. Might be as a result of overusing those tires for the first couple of laps. And there goes Lacroix. Here comes Tagliani. Dumoulin, a lot of takers for pit lane. Top three have come to the pits. Andrew Ranger staying on the racetrack. He'll want to lead a lap. As they hit their pit road speed limit, Todd Lewis is standing by waiting for them to come to service. Todd? From the lead, Kevin Lacroix makes his scheduled pit stop. The fuel stabbed, the can, the can is still stuck as Kevin Lacroix pulls away. That is a terrible break for the race leader. The 18 and the 47 have clean stops. Oh, and we've got another one. Mark Antoine Cameron into the 22. Two of the favorites to win this race have just committed a pit road violation. And look at the fuel pouring out of that fuel can. Yeah, you can see the fuel cans hanging on. This is going to amount to a full course caution because of the debris from the 74 and the 22. The 22 laying down a whole lot of fuel. On the bright side, the crew member let go, so it's just a fuel can still in the 74. Let's have another look. You've got to punch the car with the fuel can, and the only issue was, Dave, you have to pull back equally as hard as you push in, and it sounds easy. It is certainly not. Well, it is such a tight space, and you're working to click that fuel in. Now you see the can laying on the ground, dumping all that Sunoco race fuel out onto the track. Here's Tagliani stuff. That's how you do it. Uh, I don't even know. See, the fuel can has to get engaged. Is that engaging? That's somewhat the fuel person just smacking the car with the fuel can. Here comes Ranger, Todd. The four-time winner here at the Grand Prix at Trois Riviere, Andrew Ranger on pit road under caution to make his stop. The fuel probe gets pushed in. A couple of gallons of fuel flowing in. They're done. Andrew Ranger on his way. Andrew Ranger actually taking a little bit of fuel on that 27, and this is a surprise. J.M. Dumoulin taking a right front emergency tire. Alex Tagliani from Montreal, Quebec, leading the field here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. And there's still a lot of cars looking to get into line. We're close to that restart point, Dave. It looks as though Kevin Lacroix has been sent to the back. Mark Antoine Cameron has been sent to the back by virtue of them having that pit road violations. And they're way behind the field as we come to green. Everybody waiting to bunch up into the last minute. And then they have a little head of steam going into turn number one as a couple drivers veer up to avoid contact. Look at Rafael Lassard in the 07 up on the outside at turn number two. He's got veteran Jason Hathaway on the inside. Who's going to give who the space? And this is a learning opportunity for Rafael Lassard. He's just trying to learn from some of the best road race drivers in NASCAR here in the NASCAR PT Series. And he won't encounter better road racers in NASCAR until he gets to the cup level. If you want to cut your teeth on road course racing, come to Canada, race against our drivers. They're the best you're going to find. And look who's pressuring him right now. Andrew Ranger, the driver of the Mopar Dodge. There's a driver to learn from if you want to take some tips. He's had his share of victories on the road courses, particularly here in Trois-Rivières. And now it's at Alex Tagliani's turn to lead some laps in that Rona EpiPen number 18. And he's got LP Dumlin hot on his heels. steering wheel out of turn number one down to turn number three this is where a lot of the drivers have been super loose through the first half of this race and look at Dumoulin he didn't even come up to the wall on the outside he's keeping that car pinched down just a little bit I don't want to say he's out for a Sunday drive because when you watch them under braking it looks like they're hurling into the I don't even know how to describe <laughs> the action the cars make under braking in that corner at this racetrack it is unique for sure, but 
let's give a shout out to the driver the number 36 sitting there in third spot this would be one of his better drives of 2019 a season that has been dominated by bad luck for Alex LeBay Alex LeBay came back to Canada this year because this is where the opportunity was for him he went south he did a great job the funding did not materialize I've got to believe LeBay came back here hoping to repeat what he did two years ago in that championship run, and Lady Luck has not been supportive at all. Unfortunate. He's had some signs of days gone by when he won the championship here in the NASCAR Pinty series. The series. He's run near the front, but unfortunately the finishes just haven't been there. J.F. Tumlin in that 0-4, right behind Andrew Ranger. Oh, and there's trouble. Yeah, well, you can see the waving blue flag in tournament. It is the 36 of Alex LeBay. Wow, and he has parked it into the tire wall. You could hear the tire squeal off camera, and then you saw the blue flag waving. And that blue flag, when NASCAR went road racing, they only do full course yellows. Back in the day, you would have a local yellow. We're under a full course yellow now. So race director Rob Sharp has called yellow. Now you'll see yellow flags waving. It used to be you would have local cautions. Let's have another look at Alex first. Oh. And you can hear it. it the back end, just a little bit of wheel hop in the back end, and that was all it took. Now they use blue flags because you can keep on racing through the blue flag condition. In the older days, when there were local yellows, you were not allowed to pass. That made for very difficult officiating. Lots of damage to the Hotel Le Concord, number 36. They're getting it patched up. We're under caution again here at 20 again. There is a rich and prestigious history to this track and the many legends that have raced here. We salute the Grand Prix on its 50th year. How many of the drivers could you name that came across the screen? Probably, uh, I, I'm going to say about half, at very least about half. I think I was good for one. I recognize <laughs> Richard Spinard. The rest went by in a blur. Well, and Richard Dumoulin yeah, as well. Of course. I got the Richards covered. <laughs> Back under green as Dan Hawkins waves the green here on the front straight away. Headed down, we've got contact in turn number one already. Yeah, LP, it looked like got a little bit racy going into the corner, and he wanted to turn in before Tag did. Look at Jason Hathaway up in the third spot in the Kubota number three. See everybody wanting to get stretched out before you get to turn number three. Here's the exit. And you can see the cars getting tail happy once again. Rafael Lasard again on the outside of that turn three. Oh, big pileup. Alex LeBay, JF LeBurge, Jocelyn Fecto, and Anthony Simone. There's, there's that waving blue flag, so now it's a full course caution as the track is entirely blocked, but big damage to a lot of the cars involved. So if you're standing right behind that wall and you hear the wreck coming, let's have another look between two and three. Up at the top of your screen, contact between LeBerge and LeBay, and, and the way LeBay's car hit the wall just comes to a dead stop as Larry Jackson, yeah. <laughs> Action Jackson, gets around that one to the inside. He got lucky there, managed to get away without a mark. Riding on board LeBay. Bears hit him first, or if you heard a bit of wheel hop first, I can't be sure, but either way, it did not end well for Jocelyn Fecto's Rocks or Dodge. Crews having a look at the bodywork around the right side of that 36 car, but there seems to be serious problems underneath the hood. The engine is off. Yeah, you can see the fluids leaking from underneath that 36. The crew communicating with Ron Easton, the crew chief, about what's going on. And yeah, you see the puddle underneath. That is no good. J.F. LeBaire is getting some service from the Dublin crew. And Anthony Simone getting some duct tape treatment on his Silver Line Dodge. What do they say about cautions? They tend to breed more cautions, and that's what we've seen here in the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. We get set to go back to racing here in La saint Tour, the Hotel Le Concorde. And look at that, big problems in the back of the field as the entire field checked up, coming to green. Big damage to the Pi-8 GMC number 22 of Mark Antoine Cameron. I was watching the front of the pack try to tag the in and Dublin again, bouncing off each other just a little bit, but I couldn't quite tell where the hard checkup occurred, Dave. 
Well, it seemed like the drivers towards the back of the pack couldn't quite tell either because they kept going at full speed. And that's the thing about a restart is you sort of have to trust the people in front of you that they're going to go. Yeah, you're absolutely right as we watch them race down into that tight turn number four. Alex Tagliani leading the way over LP Dumoulin on lap 33. Jason half the way up to third as the caution flag will fly. There is lots of debris right down here on the front straightaway from that incident on the restart. So we'll have to send that. You can see the frustration on Andrew Ranger as well as he's just getting into the groove of things. And away goes the caution once you again. You can see the tire marks. The, the real action happens deep in the field. Now you can see it started with the 04 checking up, but the two drivers at the front banging side by side now on board the 22. Wow. Not a lot of time to react there, and Cameron shortened up that 22. Now we ride on by our board, TJ Renamato. Yeah, he was being careful through there. 22 in the pits, a lot of body damage as the crew goes to work. Now they'll have a look and make sure that the radiator's still intact, and I've got to think it is not because the engine has been killed on this 22. It is not running. Yeah, you could see some moisture on the window of the 22 as well. So he stays down pit lane. The cleanup is complete, and we're set to go back to green here at the Grand Prix de Trois-Rivières. Let's see if we can get a cleaner start. Look at Dumoulin and the 18 once again rubbing, and once again some drivers take a peek out. Yeah, the... Alex Tagliani has a unique restart style where he will change his speed a little bit coming up to green. I'm not seeing that on these restarts. I'm seeing he and LP Dumoulin kind of bounce off each other, but it's hard to tell who's initiating it, Dave. It's on the three of Jason Hathaway, one of those drivers to check up. It cost him a spot on the restart as the 17 of DJ Kennington was able to get around him. Donald Tees, we ride on board the number 24 Mercedes-Benz machine. He's on the inside of Kevin Lacroix. I was just going to say, this is his final Grand Prix de trois rivières He announced he's going to step away from doing the road courses in 2020. Going to focus more on ovals as he winds down his racing career. You know, I think he would have loved taking a run of the title this year, but they really needed to have stellar performance on the ovals. The road courses, he's done a decent job. He's, he's had solid finishes, but I think he's kind of made the decision. He just wants to come out and win races. And you know what? He probably will. Once the pressure of points is off, that's when you find victory lane. You're exactly right. Wow! Dumoulin sails it up the inside into turn number one on Jason Hathaway, and he'll clear him on the exit of the corner. That was a solid move. The driver of the Spectre Premium 04 starting to flex his muscle. We talked about hometown hero LP Dumoulin from right here at 20 Pierre Quebec. J.F. Dumoulin, also from right here, as Dumoulin Competition is the only NASCAR Pinty Series team based out of trois I, I, I want to issue a challenge to Bryce, our statistician, as J.F. Dumoulin with another pass going into turn four on D.J. Kennington. Who has the best plus-minus on road courses in the last six years in this series? I'll bet you J.F. Dumoulin's at the top of the list, partly because he doesn't qualify great, but partly because he is always passing his way through the field. Yeah, and once again, he is picking them off like grapes off a vineyard up through the field here today once again. It'll be CTMP before we get that answer because there's a <laughs> lot of math involved. But for our next road course, I'm going to have some facts to back up my prediction, Dave. Remember when this driver was out in front of this race? Before that miscue on pit lane, Kevin Lacroix continues to work his way up through the field, now in seventh, but again, a puff of smoke. That's bizarre. I thought if there was smoke out the 74, it was probably the rear end. Rear end smoke wouldn't come up through the cockpit, though. That's got to be engine or transmission. Possibly electrical in a worst-case scenario for the bumper-to-bumper -to -bumper oh. Total Lubricants number 74. Electrical smoke doesn't usually last that long. That's usually true. if you get smoke from an electrical problem, it burns up pretty quick and ends your day. These two drivers going at it hard now. Alex Tagliani, LP Dumoulin, so close together as they head towards 
A tight turn in turn number nine. It, it is a possible passing spot, but it's tough to make that one stick. Well, and keep in mind, from the mandatory fuel stop until now, we haven't had any green flag runs to speak of. So now these drivers are getting to stretch their legs again a little bit, see what they've got underneath them. And right now, I think LP Dumont has to feel pretty good about what he's got. And Alex Tagliani probably doesn't feel too bad either. Two Dumoulin's in the top three now as both brothers in a podium position, trailing the Rona EpiPen Chevy of Alex Tagliani. Remember, Tagliani trying to win three in a row. He won his first here in 2017. He also won in the Atlantic Series back in the day, coming off a rough Western swing for that team, realistically. Uh, he finished eighth in Edmonton. One team having a great run, LP Dumoulin the 47, JF Dumoulin the 04, Dave. The best they have ever done as a tandem is first and fourth in this event back in 2014. I know how special it would be for these guys to both be on the podium here at this event. Could you imagine celebrating 50 years as a race team? Right here in 20 Pierre, Quebec, in front of a boisterous hometown crowd. And what a crowd it is. Promoter Dominic Fougere has done yet again a wonderful job with this race. The hospitality suite are jammed. The suites are jammed. If we get a look at the Turn 1 Grandstand, which we sometimes see up the front straightaway, it is jam-packed. And there are people everywhere around this racetrack. Standing room only crowd, more than 30,000 people on hand. A pair of Ontario racers and DJ Kennington and Jason Hathaway battling inside the top five. There is Andrew Ranger and the 74 of Kevin Lacroix. Remember, Ranger came into this one with your points lead, 18 points up on the 74 of Lacroix. So this could tighten things up. Well, right now, Ranger is where he wants to be. They both led a lap. Kevin Lacroix knows he has to get around that 27. That's his mission. In fact, I spoke with Kevin Lacroix yesterday, and it was fascinating because I still think after the Western Swing and lots of smoke out of the 74 of Lacroix, this is something we'll want to keep an eye on. That is not a good sign. But he said, Adam, I know the championship has been won with either 505 to 545 points. I have figured out what I need to do over the next races to get to 545 points, and that's my goal week in and week out. So it's not a matter of watching Andrew Ranger. It's a matter of hitting 545 points, and historically, that should be enough for him to win a championship. Next time we ride on board, let's see if he brought his calculator with him, but that smoke is getting heavier from the back end of that Dodge. Sorry for the long story. I, I got a little winded there. <laughs> But I thought it was fascinating. It is. Kevin Lacroix is a seat of the pants, go as fast as I can kind of guy. Smoke still coming out the back. DJ Kennington in the 17 leading that train of four cars. Five now with Rafael Lassard closing in in the 07. I've never thought of Kevin Lacroix as a calculated driver. He is a gutsy all-out competitor. Looking back from Andrew Ranger to Kevin Lacroix, they work around this 11-turn street circuit in downtown Swanigier. Look at that smoke, though, from the 74. The smoke won't go away, but neither will the speed. It's unbelievable, Kevin Lacroix. That car's still hanging in there. J.F. Dumoulin all by himself after clearing this pack. He has set sail. In fact, he is turning the fastest laps of the race right now. Everybody trying to catch the 18 of Alex Tagliani. He continues to lead, but L.P. Doolin turning up the pressure. For the 50th running of the Grand Prix de 20 year, this one has been a dandy. Two veterans of Quebec have been all over each other for the past 20 laps as Alex Tagliani leads L.P. Dumoulin. That's about as big a lead as we've seen Tagliani get. It's rarely more than a car length and a half. L.P. Dumoulin still running a tighter line than the 18 of Tagliani. Obviously, just where these cars are comfortable running, as I say that, Dumoulin allows his car to swing out just a little bit. But this is really two easy. 
evenly matched race cars with six laps remaining, Dave. Well, we talk about sayings in racing oh. all the time, and TJ Renamato goes for a loop just in front of the leaders. That opens the door for the 47 of LP Jubal, and the WeatherTech.ca Dodge goes to top spot. Listen to the crowd. Oh, my goodness. TJ Renamato, driver's door exposed to the field in a split second. Tag goes to the right, LP goes to the left. Neither of them scrub off any speed, and we've got a new leader. Look at this. Rina Motto still rolling, still rolling, way out of the groove. And tag, it's a blind corner. Tag the Annie and Dumoulin would have come through that turn with no idea there was a car parked sideways there. And they both did a great job to avoid the broad side of the 0-2. We're on board with Rina Motto. So a simple enough spin, little bump off the tire while the engine is stopped, and that's the problem. He's trying to refire. Wow! Holy moly, that was crazy! Time for an underwear change for TJ Renamato as we stay under green with a brand new leader in LP Dumoulin. Dumoulin out in front. He had showed signs that he might be a little bit quicker than the 18, but the 18 being the race leader might not have been showing all that he had, so I still don't count out Tagliani as he's hot on the heels of Dumoulin. Then you never do count out Alex Tagliani. Here's this is a good battle for sixth spot with Avon Ontario's Jason Hathaway in the three and Raphael Lassard in the 07. I'll tell you the big news here, Kevin Lacroix is at the front end of this pack and now Andrew Rangers at the back end of that pack. That's a four point spread. Kevin Lacroix needs those valuable points. Type that into his calculator. As you see, just two laps to go. Let's ride on board, Raphael Lassar. And he's not doing too badly here today for his third road course race, Adam. Yeah, it's the first road race in a Pinty Series car. He drove a late model sportsman car once at iCar, once at this event, but he's never driven anything like this race car. And I've been fascinated watching the way he tries to pass. He races it almost like a short track. He'll go into the corner with the car in front of him and then try to poke a nose to the inside where normally you see on a road course, you try to outbreak them going in. He's doing a great job. Really is, and the dueling cars in this field, three of them are inside the top 10. We should mention another driver making his return to the series today is the 39 of Alex Gannett. He sits in 11th, trying to make a full-time return to the series very shortly. He was fast in this morning's warm-up session, but we're on the last lap. Last time around here in Le Cincon Tour Hotel Le Concorde. There is your race leader through turn number three for the final time in the WeatherTech.ca number 47, LP Jumelin. He has stretched his advantage over Tagliani in the 18 under heavy braking down into turn four for the final time. That's a lap car just behind Tagliani, and you can't even see the third place driver. That's the 0-4 of JF Dumoulin. Wouldn't this be fantastic for the Dumoulin family and for the history here at GP3R, Dave? Wait till you hear the crowd erupt around this 11-turn street circuit as LP Dumoulin works his way through the final few quarters. He'll make his way onto Avenue Gilles Villeneuve and see the checkered flag. A win in the hometown race for the man from 20 years. And the crew celebrates on pit road. What an achievement. The Mopar winning moment for L.P. Dumoulin. Two Dumoulin brothers on the podium for the first time in NASCAR history. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back in victory lane. L.P. Dumoulin burnt down the streets here at 20 Deer just moments ago. His family has a great tradition here. 50 years of tradition as the 40-year-old has captured his ninth career NASCAR victory. I'm surprised he's not fixing his hair while he does his burnout. He's reaching around the cockpit. Yes! LP Dumoulin out of the 
car and soaking it all in. Second time for LP Doomlin to win here at his home track at GP3R. Let's have a look at the top 10, Dave. See Kevin Lacroix coming home in fourth. Good runs put in by Simone Zion Vienne and Donald Teach. But finally, Dumoulin off the top of his car. Todd? What a day for LP Dumoulin for Dumoulin competition. GP3R 50th anniversary for our uh, semi -brack car was good all weekend long. We knew we had a car to win a couple times this season at Chile, but we've been patient. Here we are at home for the 50th edition. 50 years for Dumoulin competition. My family, my wife, my kids, my mom, dad, everybody at Dumoulin, partners, sponsors. I'm so happy right now. There's no way to descri describe this. This is a very great day. Go so celebrate and enjoy with your oh, brother, will. too, Thanks on the podium. Thanks to the podium. fans for waiting. Let's do this. Yeah! There's going to be a good party. We'll take a look at your point standings. And as we suspected, it's a little bit tighter at the top. Kevin Lacroix closes in. 14 points from Ranger. How about LP Dumoulin? 20 points back. Any further than that, they might run the risk of not being in contention, Dave, with those top three definitely with a chance. Alex? It looked like it might be three in a row, but it seemed to get away from you. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate. We got caught with the situation with the O2. Um, you know, to, uh, congrats to LP. I mean, he, he really wanted this race, um, but uh, until the incident, I think we were gonna be able to hold him off. Uh, what I'm really upset about it is uh, it was an incident and the flag were coming out. And I think passing under an incident, it's kind of a you know pretty uh, dangerous thing. Uh, I was myself surprised that uh, he passed under that incident, so I didn't really force the issue. I thought there was going to be a reposition, but uh, nobody did anything. So it's kind of the first time that someone uh, makes a, a passing move um, during a car that spun out with flags coming out. So, uh, yeah, I mean, someone will have to explain that. Thanks. Alex. Thanks. So let's explain that, Dave. The, the blue flags, and the blue flags probably didn't even come out yet. But they indicate there's an issue. You can still go racing. I think it was more reflex than a pass myself. And Tagliani coming from the world of open wheel racing where the corner marshals have yellow flags and that's where you're not allowed to pass. A big smile in victory lane and now it's trophy time here on the podium. Two Dumoulin brothers here at the Grand Prix de Tourigan. And how exciting for them. Their wives are joining them for this celebration. This is a moment they will never forget. The eighth race of the NASCAR Pinty Series is brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. By Hotel Le Concorde in Quebec City. And by Honey Goo from Clean Flow on Honey of a Lou. What a show these fans caught. The champagne is spraying. And that's the most unique camera position I've ever seen. Right on the bottle, Dave. Back to the ovals for race number nine. We'll be in Riverside, Nova Scotia. We'll see you there. This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoyed today's broadcast.